Hi, hey, welcome to uh, the meeting. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Dr. Bartlett. I'm principal at Farragut High School, and, and I want to welcome you guys to our school. Um, if you need a restroom, there are restrooms down that hallway right there um, on the right-hand side. There are also restrooms if you go out that door or that door. There are restrooms out there. So I know some people in this meeting might say, hey, where's the restroom? There they are. Uh, welcome to Farragut High School. Welcome to our community meeting about kind of the future, what's going to happen with our schools in this area and how we're going to build schools. So before I turn it over, just a reminder, I do this in front of everybody when we get a chance to. What we do here and what we do at all of our Farragut schools is our mission and vision. Our mission is this, it's really simple. It's to take every student that walks through our front door, no matter what level they are, love them well, push them academically, and prepare them for their next step. And what I mean by every student is a student that comes in at our school and is a freshman, they make a 36 in the ACT and they're gonna go cure cancer. Or the student that comes in our school and they've got multiple handicaps and their parents are just hoping that they can live independently and be a Walmart greeter. And we have every one of those students in between that scale. And every student in our schools, every Farragut school is equally as important. So as we talk through th this today, uh, just bear in mind that, hey, we're here, every one of us here for the best of our kids and what makes sense to make sure our kids get a great education. And when they leave this school, they can do anything they want to do. So on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Dr. Garfield Adams, and he's going to lead this session about kind of what the future of our schools might look like at Farragut. Thank you, Dr. Bartlett. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming out today. I know it's a little chilly outside and you probably had several things to do and so this may not be at the top of your list, but we certainly appreciate you coming out and giving your input. Uh, this session is really about getting your input and give, getting your feedback. Uh, we will have uh, several uh, avenues for you to give that input and we'll share that information with you at the end of the presentation. I do want to recognize uh, Commissioner Schoonmaker. Thank you so much for being here and also our fabulous board member, Susan Horn, thank you all so much for, for attending tonight. Uh, so just so you know, um, I am the chief of, chief, sorry, I'm the assistant superintendent of operations. Uh, so if you have questions at who is this guy and what does he do, that is what I do. Uh, Mr. Chauver in the blue coat, he is my director of facilities and new construction. And then we have Mr. Dillingham, he is my director of transportation. Uh, so those, in, those gentlemen will be here to the end of the presentation and they can answer any questions that you may have. We also have our Chief of Communication, Ms. Carly Harrington, and so she'll be here also, and if you have additional questions on how you can provide additional input, she can share that information with you. Now, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. If, you, if I need to slow down, please raise your hand and have me repeat anything and go back. Uh, the reason why I wanna go through this fairly quickly is because I wanna give you all an opportunity to ask the necessary questions that you may have. All right, so how did we get here? Here's our timeline. I have been in this position uh, for roughly a year and a half, uh, but, but this started in FY21 with the capital plan. There was a fe feasibility study to address capacity and traffic concerns at, for the Farragut schools. In FY22, there was a capital plan rec they recommended construction of new school due to the cost and structural and practicalities of, it, of an addition in Farragut. So basically what that's saying is on this campus, you have some challenges, right? If you want to do an addition, you have some challenges. Getting uh, construction materials on the campus, having uh, three schools, you have some challenges. On September the 20, 2023, the board approved a property on Boring Road uh, to construct a new Farragut school. So that is a true blessing. Uh, I'm very excited about that property. Uh, where there was another property three years ago that we were looking at, uh, and we were very fortunate to get this property. It is very ideal when you look at uh, the demographics of where we currently are. Okay, so this is our current capacity enrollment. As you can see, every one of our schools, the primary, the intermediate, uh, and the uh, high school, they're over capacity. If you look at the middle school, they're not over capacity. However, with the way that we're utilizing that middle school, several of our students are in portables uh, at the intermediate school. So the challenges. So using portables to provide temporary capacity relief at it's three out of our four schools, 
We're overcrowding in our elementary and high schools and our traffic congestion at all campuses. I have purposely uh, taken some visits in the morning uh, to Farragut High School and the intermediate and the middle school just to see the traffic flow. And so I know how tough that may be. I've even uh, took a trip out to the primary school. So it, there are very congested areas. So we are well aware of the challenges as far as um, the traffic flow. Uh, so on October the 4th, the board voted to acquire property on Boring Road. On October the 22nd, uh, the presentation to the board for possible solutions. So let me be clear when I say this, these are solutions. Originally, what we had was we have land, we're gonna build an elementary school. That is the tr traditional way of doing things. However, with the booming growth, especially in this side of the county, we have to be more strategic. In other words, we want to bring ideas, we want to bring um, solutions, that answer checks all the boxes. What we don't want to do is build an elementary school and five years from now we say, hey, what did you do about our middle school? What did you do about our high school? And was that middle was that elementary school the correct school as far as size and location? So we want to be very strategic moving forward. And we also want to get the input from our families. We need that input. I am a former high school and middle school principal. I know how critical that is and I know how necessary that is. On January, the 20, uh, January 2024, uh, the presentation to the board will come back to the board with a recommendation. And again, this is where we need your input, right? We need your input to make a sound decision and we need your input to share that with our board members. So this is, as you can see, our existing schools and you can see where the new property is. As you can see, that does relieve some of that congestion, but it is still in close proximity. Okay, the three possible solutions. Option one is a new elementary school. So we build a new K-5 school for 1,200 students. The existing primary remains a primary school at 706 students. The existing intermediate school remains an intermediate school at 558 students. The existing, um, the existing middle school remains a middle school with the same capacity. And the existing high school remains a high school nine through 12, grades nine through 12. The pros are it's direct relief to overcrowding at Farragut Primary and Farragut Intermediate in line with the district's traditional response to capacity concerns, and it's the least expensive solution. The cons are it does not address capacity concerns at Farragut Middle and High School. It does not address traffic congestion at Farragut Middle or Farragut High School, and it requires rezoning for elementary schools. This is just a diagram that shows you basically how some of those uh, buildings would be sectioned off. And you'll see that diagram in, in the different uh, proposals. Uh, again, um, Mr. Shover, my director of facilities and new construction uh, slash architect, he can walk you through what that looks like. Uh, and I know a big concern for families, is there a, a great degree of separation if we have a, uh, a freshman academy, whether it be with an elementary or a middle school? And the answer to that question is yes, there will be a separation. I learned a new term and it's called a demising wall. Did I get that right, Mr. Shover? Sure. All right. If you want the, vo the vocabulary version of that, he can share with that with you. All right. Option two, new middle school plus elementary and a freshman academy. It's a new build. It would be a middle school of 1,600 students. The existing primary school would be converted into a K-5 uh, elementary school with 706 students. The existing intermediate school would be two-thirds of middle school, but it'd be expanded into a K-5 elementary. So in other words, an existing middle, middle, the existing intermediate school would be, a, the, the two-thirds of that school would be a middle, I'm sorry, two-thirds of the, what was a middle school would be an intermediate school. The existing one third of the would be the existing one third of the existing middle school would be renovated into a freshman academy. So this is what I was referring to when we bring over the high school students, the freshmen, they would occupy a third of that building. Two thirds of that school would be an intermediate school, an elementary school. A third would be the freshman academy. The existing high school now becomes grades 10 through 12. I will tell you, uh, moving forward, the district is looking at academies, and part of that is including a freshman academy. Again, as a former principal uh, at Oak Ridge High School, to be specific, uh, I would love a freshman academy. And it's just that transition for freshmen um, into the high school and for several different reasons. But that's just my personal opinion. There are pros and cons with anything. 
Uh, but I do want you to understand, like, we do have several schools in the districts that, that have a freshman academy. The pros, it provides a long-term comprehensive solution for all Farragut schools. It creates room for growth in all Farragut schools. It provides dedicated space for the Farragut High School Freshman Academy, and it eases traffic on the middle and high school campuses. The cons would be it's a longer process, would require construction of new school and renovation of Farragut Middle School. This was another concern that I heard. What if we occupy the space at the Farragut Middle School with an elementary school? We would do some significant renovations. We would make that school to, to where it would accommodate elementary students. 1,400 students is larger than any existing uh, Knox County school. So in other words, 1,400 students would be the largest elementary school that we build in Knox County schools. And it will involve rezoning elementary schools. That, as you will see, that's a common theme as far as the elementary piece. Again, here's a diagram that just shows how those buildings would be sectioned off. And if you have additional questions, Mr. Shover will be happy to show you um, with the present, with the, what we have on the easels. All right, option three, a new elementary plus middle slash freshman academy. It's a new build. It's a K through five elementary. The existing primary would be converted into an elementary. The existing intermediate school would be converted into a freshman academy. So 500 students would come over and the existing middle school would remain. Their capacity would be at 1,519. And then the high school again becomes at grades 10 through 12. The pros are it provides a long-term comprehensive solution for elementary and high schools. It creates room for growth in most Farragut schools. It provides dedicated space for Farragut High School Freshman Academy. The cons are it's a longer process and it would require construction of new school and renovation for Farragut Middle School. 1,400 students is, the lar is larger than any existing elementary school. It does not address traffic at Farragut Middle School and Farragut High School, and it does not add capacity for middle school. And lastly, it will involve rezoning for elementary schools. Again, there is a diagram that Mr. Shover would be glad to explain to you how those buildings are sectioned off with the different, different options. Okay, so a recap. Option one builds capacity in elementary schools. Option two builds capacity at all Farragut schools. And option three builds capacity in elementary and high schools. Okay, so what you're looking at there, and then I'll cl click to another side. I'll leave this up until the end and I'll pull up the next presentations that we'll have uh, within the next week. Uh, but that basically is a QR code where we get your feedback. Please click on that and take that survey. Uh, and, and we will certainly use that information uh, to build a QA and a and, and build on our presentations as we move forward. So again, please provide your input. We greatly appreciate your input and need your input.